Arizona State Schools for the Deaf and the Blind, ASDB, plays a pivotal role in educating children from birth to 21 years young and has done so for over a century. In fact, it might surprise you to learn that ASDB has been operating since 1912, the year Arizona was welcomed into the Union as a state. As you can imagine, a lot can change in a hundred years, and that has certainly been the case with ASDB. To help you understand just a small portion of the change and growth ASDB has been through, I've selected some relics of history that I've carefully preserved over the years and now housed in our museum. Please enjoy. Important Leaders in ASDB's History In 1895, the Territorial Governor of Arizona, Sam Hughes, signed House Bill 22, providing education for the deaf and the blind. Nineteen ten. John Matthews, first president of Arizona State University, went to Massachusetts and met with Henry C. White, a deaf graduate of Gallaudet College in Washington, D.C. 1911, White moved to Phoenix and started a private school for the deaf at his residence. 1912, Governor W. P. Hunt appointed Henry C. White as the first deaf principal of the School for the Deaf and the Blind. 1929, Howard Griffin, former principal, became the first superintendent. Later that same year, Roy Nilsson replaced him. 1941 to 1974. For 33 years, Dr. Edward Tillinghast served as superintendent. His accomplishments include creating a plan for establishing the ASDB agency in 1965 and overseeing the creation of the Phoenix Day School for the Deaf in 1967. Many other superintendents served after Tillinghast, but it wasn't until 104 years after Henry C. White, ASDB's first principal, that ASDB would have another leader who was deaf. Present. On July 15, 2016, Annette Reichman became ASDB's first deaf superintendent and first superintendent with vision limitations. First school campus. The first campus was located on the University of Arizona grounds, next to the old main building. Nineteen twenty one to twenty two. In nineteen twenty one, Building construction began, and by 1922, the ASDB campus consisted of five buildings, two dormitories, a kitchen, a powerhouse, and a classroom. 1945, all original buildings, with the exception of the superintendent's house and bathhouse, were dismantled and rebuilt. The superintendent's house and bathhouse are the only original ASDB buildings remaining. They were built over 89 years ago. Today, we dedicate historic landmark plaques in their honor. Now, 
In 2016, the campus has greatly expanded. The heart of ASTB, its students, teachers, and staff. Sewing class. In 1925, both blind and deaf girls were in the same sewing class together. In 1926, the girls that were in physical education were posing in their dresses. A photograph taken in 1937 of Jackie Coker, a deafblind student who was called Arizona's Helen Keller. She is well known for presenting at different workshops. In 1928, ASDB was one of the first schools with the swimming pool in Tucson. Only the boys were allowed to dive off the diving board. In 1930, Boy Scouts invited the Boy Scouts of the Catalina Council to compete in swimming. In 1936, boys were painted in gold from their head to their toes. They performed the Golden Athlete, twice in 1936 and 1937. In 1938, all the teachers and students wore Western wear during the Rodeo Week in February. In 1936, Sea Scout was formed. They wore white uniforms just like the Navy. General Pershing visited the campus and observed the Scouts camping drill. In 1948, a quartet consisting of four blind boys performed on Radio KVOA's Bard Dance Program. People sure did enjoy dancing. In 1950, the Blind Chorus traveled by train to Chicago to perform a concert. They sang for 3,000 delegates at the International Lions Convention. As you can see, ASDB holds a special place in Arizona's rich history. From its origins in Arizona's wild west and territorial ways, to its expansion within the heart and soul of metropolitan Tucson. ASDB has grown and changed in many ways, while its mission has remained much the same. Today we pay tribute to the important role ASDB has played in Arizona's history and dedicate the superintendent's house and bathhouse as Arizona Historical Landmarks. By honoring these two buildings, we help preserve them for future generations to help them stand up to the test of time. These landmarks symbolize the unwavering commitment Arizona and ASDB have towards educating youth who are deaf, blind, visually impaired, and deaf blind throughout all of Arizona. From the past to the present and to the future.